Let me bring up a scenario that you will find very, very relatable. Let us say I am giving you a bunch of your bank account transactions and you have this data available either in form of a text document or it is also available in a form of a spreadsheet. So which one will you prefer? I think most of you will prefer the spreadsheet version, right? Because in a spreadsheet, you can easily see all of the data. You can verify all of the rows and you can even verify all of your columns. This makes things super simple, right? And it speeds up the process also. That is exactly what database does when it comes to computer applications. And naturally, it is very essential when it comes to system design. So in this particular video, we are going to talk all about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Databases are a very fundamental concept when it comes to computer science. And they become even more critical when you talk about system design. Because your entire computer application depends upon how efficient your database is. In this particular video, I will not go over all the basics of a database, like what is a database, what are all the asset properties and all those things. I want to focus on the context where you can link it up to system design. You can find out all the advantages, its challenges and how you can cope up with them. So before we get more into it, let us do a quick recap about what all do we already know. So up till now, we have discussed why system design is essential and where will you find it in your career path. We discussed about scaling and what is horizontal and vertical scaling. After that, we have now started to learn about some of the fundamental concepts like what is a client server model, what is a load balancer and what do you mean by caching and some of its eviction methods as well. I would recommend you to watch all my previous videos first and then move ahead. Because while we are building all of these concepts, we are also connecting everything to an example of a bookstore, something that you see in real life. And that makes things easier to connect and you will remember them forever. Once again, let us take back our example of the bookstore. When you enter this bookstore, how does it typically look like? Your bookstore looks something like this, correct? And there are so many operations going on at the same time. You have people buying books, you have people returning books. There could be customers who have previous issues and then you could also have new inventory coming in, right? So think about this. You are a store manager and you have to take care of all of these operations. And you cannot just take a piece of paper and start writing down everything. That will simply not work, right? What if you want to find out at the end of the day, okay, how much sale did I make? Okay, what is my operating profit? Okay, what is my monthly revenue? How do you find out all of that? It is simply not possible if you are not organizing all of your data. So certainly, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? The most naive way that can come to your mind is that, okay, I will try to maintain some kind of a ledger where I write down all of the transactions that take place during the day. So what you will do is you will have a date and then you will write down your transaction and then you will write down the same. Correct? So you would keep on filling this ledger throughout your entire day. And then at the end of the day, you can use these columns to find out, okay, this was my sale and this was the item that was returned. And then you can also use this ledger to maintain your inventory. You can maintain a list that, okay, these are all the books that I have and these are all the books that are out of stock. So think about a time when there was no computer to solve this problem. This kind of a ledger was maintaining all of the records, right? And this makes things so much simpler. This reduces all of the chaos. So similarly, in computer applications, you use a database. And in system design, we represent databases using this particular symbol. What a database does is it kind of creates a layer on top of all the storage data that you have. So now when you want to ask that, okay, on this particular day, what was my profit? Then you can ask this database and it will return the result to you. And that is managed by all of the tables and all of the rows and columns that are created in it. And that makes databases a very crucial component of system design. If you think about it, a database can give you a lot of advantages when it comes to whatever application you're trying to deploy. So one of them is efficient data retrieval. So think about it. If you are maintaining a ledger, it is so easy to find out that, okay, in the month of April, this happened in the month of June, this happened. Similarly, in a database, you will maintain tables 
for each of the month or you could have rows for each of the month and then you can quickly look up all of the data. You might have heard about all of the SQL queries, right? Like select star from particular table where my month is this. So that makes your data retrieval super fast. The next benefit you get is data integrity and consistency. So think like this. When I have a ledger, I know that this is my source of truth and adding up all of the values will help me to audit that everything is going right. Because think like this, let us say I put X amount of money in my bookstore. Now this ledger, it is keeping a track of all of the expenses. So I can make sure that, okay, here is all of my money that was spent. Similarly, in a database, you keep a track of all of the entries that you have added. Think like this, you are maintaining a database and there are users who are signing up on your platform. This database will keep a list of all of those users. So at every moment, you know that, okay, my site has these many users available. These are active, these are logged out, and these are currently doing something. So a database gives you that consistency and integrity. And one more advantage that you get is with databases, you are able to handle complex queries as well. So to take back the example of a bookstore, when you have this ledger, I can ask questions like, okay, what was my profit for the month of April? What was my profit for the month of June? How is this profit trending? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? What was it compared to the last year? So with this ledger, I am able to answer all of these questions, right? Similarly, with a database, you are doing all of it in computer programs. And then you can answer so many queries very, very quickly. Like how is your app performing? How are users feeling? Are they happy? What are all the comments? What is the sentiment? So these are all the complex queries and databases make them possible. Just like these, there are a lot of features that you can take advantage of when it comes to databases. But I do not want to get into all of those details. I want to talk about databases when it comes to the aspect of system design. And primarily with system design, you want to focus on what are the challenges and then you have to address it. Because in the end, when you are developing a system, you want that a lot of users should be able to access my system and they should be happy. That is the main end goal. So we want to address all of those issues. When it comes to issues, the first issue that we have to talk about is scalability. Think like this. I have my ledger over here, right? And let us say there is some sale coming in. And what would you expect? You would see that there are a lot of customers coming in. And then what happens? At that particular moment, just maintaining all of these entries in a single ledger can get difficult. You can face problems if you're trying to maintain all of those entries in a single book. So in that case, what will you do? In such a scenario, you can split up your ledger in two different books. In one book, you can maintain all the sales and in the other book, you can maintain all of your inventory. So this way, two separate people can work upon it and you are maintaining all of your information, correct? So this was a challenge and that is how we address it. Similarly, when it comes to computer applications, let us say this was a database and you are developing a ride sharing app, just like an Uber. And what happens when there is a lot of traffic? Let us say there is surge pricing and a lot of customers are trying to access the app. Some people are trying to make payments and some people are just trying to sign up. All of that can happen at once. And at that moment, if you are just using a single database, it can become slow. Your service will go down and customers are again unhappy. That is not what you want. So in such a scenario, how can you scale up? What you can do is instead of maintaining a single database, you can split up your databases into three parts. You could have new rights, ongoing rights, and then payments. What does this do? You scaled up your database and you are maintaining all of these three different modules in three different databases. So this is just a challenge when you are developing your application. And this is just a certain way how you can address it. Because there cannot be a single way by which you can always address your scalability issues. This is more just to get an example of what could happen and how you can tackle it. The next challenge that you can face is consistency. And it usually happens in a distributed system where your application is deployed all over the world. Think like this, you have a bookstore that is available only in one region right now. 
and then you are opening another location. So what could happen? For two different locations, you will have two different ledgers, right? Or you could also have one ledger, but then there are scalability issues and it is hard to maintain from two different locations. So you can give one ledger to another person and one ledger to another person in another city. The challenge over here is that you have to maintain that both of these ledgers, they are in the same format. You cannot do that. Okay, this ledger is in some other format and this particular person is maintaining this ledger in some other format. If that happens and I ask you, okay, what is the profit? Then this person has to do different calculations. This person has to do different calculations. So this is a challenge when it comes to distributed network. You have to make sure that your ledgers are consistent. And similar is the case with computer applications as well. If you are deploying your application in three different regions, you could have databases in three different regions as well. And it is your responsibility that all of these three databases, they are consistent. So that whenever you are doing queries, if you are able to do query on one of the databases, the same query should work on all the three different regions. Only then your system is efficient. You cannot expect to write a query that works on region one and it fails on region two. That will defeat the purpose and you will end up wasting more time just to write a query that works for a particular region. So achieving consistency is very, very important. The next challenge I want to talk about is of prime importance and that is availability. Availability simply means what happens in case of a failure. So let us say my bookstore had this particular ledger and what if this ledger suddenly gets lost? What do you do? All of your data and work is simply gone, right? So to circumvent it, what will you do? You can maintain a duplicate copy. And what do you do? Let us say you maintain all of your records in the first ledger during daytime. And when you come back home, you simply copy all of your records in this duplicate copy. And then the next day, again, you write all of your records in the night, you put all of your records in the duplicate copy. So even if this copy gets lost, then you have a duplicate copy available that you can take next day. And it may be possible that some work is lost, but a major chunk of the copy is available. So your business is not impacted. Similarly, in a computer application, if you just have one database and it gets corrupted or it gets compromised, all of your work is lost. So what you can do is you can make several copies of your database and you can apply the same approach. Periodically on a cron schedule, you can just copy all of your transactions to both the databases. So what happens if this database gets out of service? Then your first backup can take up the place of the primary database, right? And in the meanwhile, you can start to restore this faulty database. And when you're restoring it, you can use this backup to copy all of your data again. So your performance is not degraded. And this is what availability is. It simply means that your service is available most of the times so that the customers can access it. Sure, there can still be times where you need to have a downtime to upgrade your versions of the databases. And that is perfectly fine. But you need to make sure that your service is available most of the times. And that is a challenge that you need to be aware about. Certainly, this is not an exhaustive list about all of the challenges that you can face when using a database, but it kind of gives you an entry point. You know how to think. So whenever you're designing your systems, you will tickle your mind and try to think that, okay, can this be a problem? Can this be a problem? And it gives you an idea how you can address it. Sure, we will talk more about databases, availability, and all of its optimizations when we are covering some of the actual designs. But this should give you an idea about what is happening and why we are doing something. The last thing I want to talk about databases and system design is SQL versus NoSQL. You might have heard about it a lot, right? There are some databases which follow the SQL terminology and some are based upon the NoSQL concept. So basically what happens is if your data is very well defined, for example, a bank statement, no matter which bank you are using, your statement typically looks like this, right? You would have a date, the transaction, the credit or the debit, and then a balance. So you see that this schema is common and this structure will help you throughout all of your customers. And this is very much defined. 
Whereas if you think about social networking websites, think about the Instagram comment section. You see that how they have evolved over time. Earlier, you could just comment. And now you can like a comment, you can reply to a comment, and then you can also add images to your comment. So this comment, this is evolving. So whenever you have a structure that is not following a certain schema, and that can be expanded. In those scenarios, you would want to use a NoSQL database because it works on documents rather than individual rows as compared to a SQL format. Also, here are some examples of databases that follow the SQL format and the NoSQL format. Whenever you have time, just try to read through them and they can give you an idea about the use cases where they are used. I think this kind of covers the basics that you should know about when you are talking about introducing a database in your system design diagram. And you would notice this theme throughout. We do not talk about the advantages mostly. We are more interested in what are the challenges. And even during an interview process, your interviewer will be more interested that, okay, how will you solve this problem? How will you solve this problem? Because if you're able to address them, your system will work efficiently. So this is a journey and you will continue to learn as we go ahead. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or what other fascinating things have you found about a database that we should address? What are some of the challenges and how can you overcome them? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. It will become a really interesting place and there will be some very good discussions. If you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going and as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.